Good afternoon, student. For today's session of SAP, we have Rajni sir with us. Rajni sir, you can continue with your class, sir. All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon, students. Welcome back to the Excel sessions. Morning, uh, we had discussed about uh, dynamic filtering the consolidate feature. All these things we had seen in the morning. And uh, even we also saw uh, subtotal feature and subtotal function, its importance and its importances and all. Now we are going to learn a, a tool called formula auditing. OK. And the formula tab under the formula tab, there is a group called formula auditing. There are so many features in this. Not everyone is everything is important, but whichever is important, I'll uh, take it for you. Right. OK. The first of it is before I get to that particular topic, let me explain the data here. So as we had done, did it for the consolidate feature, we have uh, some products names okay and we have the total and from this total the tax has been calculated by using this formula and from this and using these two columns i have calculated the total value okay this value plus the tax we get the total value so these are the formulas available uh, in this sheet okay so now I am going to select uh, this cell. OK, I am going to select this cell and I wanted to know which all the, which are all the cells which affect this value. Which are all the other cells which affect this value? Which means in uh, <coughs> changing which cell will change the value in this cell. OK, so we are trying to get the dependence, I mean precedence of this particular cell. We are trying to get the precedence of this cell. So I'll select this cell and click on this trace precedence. So trace precedence, we are uh, now we are getting a small box and an arrow mark. This denotes that all this cell, all this cell is directly connected to this cell. OK. Which also means that when you are changing this value, when you are changing any value in this particular in any of these cells, this value will also automatically change. This is called trace precedence. Now let us try to take the trace precedence of this cell. I'll click on trace precedence. Now this cell is directly connected to this cell. So if there is any changes happening here, this cell also will change. I'll take the trace precedence of this also. Yeah, now what I've got is when we are changing a value here, for example, I'm changing this to 3500 here. My this value is getting changed. This value is getting uh, because this value is getting changed. This value is also getting changed. And because this value is getting changed, this value is also getting changed. So everything is interconnected. This is what it is showing in trace precedence. OK, when is this useful? When you have multiple formulas spread across the sheet. OK, for maybe you, you will have a formula uh, somewhere uh, somewhere here. And the cell used for this formula will be somewhere here. So it will be difficult for you to find out that particular cell. And you wanted to see which are all the cells which affect this value. In that case, you can use trace precedence. So as I told you, only when the data is too huge and your formulas are spread across the complete sheet. OK, that is the case when we use this trace precedence. Now, if you wanted to remove these arrows, you can click on this remove arrows button under the formula auditing group only. 
remove uh, remove arrows i'll uh, get the arrows removed now now i want to know which cell value will get affected when i change this value i am going to change the cell value i do not know which are all the cells which uses this particular cell address which cells have used b4 in their formula i do not know that okay if in case i do not know that i can select here select the cell and click on trace dependence okay which are the cells which is dependent on this cell i'll click on trace dependence so this is the cell this is the cell which is dependent okay and there is a small dotted arrow mark which shows that there is another sheet also okay there is another sheet also which uses this cell value in consolidated value we have the total no we have found out the total where we have used that b4 of january b4 of jan sheet we have used it here also that is why it is showing a dotted line and showing a sheet symbol okay which means that this cell is also used by another sheet which sheet is that we don't know okay that is not specified here but cell it is it is very clear when we are changing this value this value will get affected that is what it is showing here trace dependence okay so i am when i am changing this value i am not sure okay when if i change this value what all things will happen where all will this uh, where all will this get affected okay in that case you can use this feature hope you understand the importance okay so now now i find i found out that this cell value is getting affected if we are changing this value okay now now i wanted to further dig down okay further dig down so that i wanted to know which cell are depend on on this cell i'll again click on trace dependence now i found that when you change this value this value will get changed and this value will also get changed okay so when so which means that when you change this value this cell this cell and this cell the values will get changed this is directly connected and these are these two cells are indirectly connected to the cell so it's showing the connections between the cells that is trace dependence all right so uh, th that's one part of uh, formula auditing trace precedence and trace dependence now let me remove these arrows now there is something called a watch window there is something called a watch window in our case we have all these three sheets separately january february march and then we have a consolidated value now when i am changing this value i want to know what is the uh, how does it get affects my total total in the sense this cell the grand total of all the months okay when i am changing this cell i also want to see the change in my consolidated value this sheet if we have only four sheets it is not difficult for us to go to this sheet navigate to the sheet and check this value okay it's not difficult but imagine we have 100 sheets here okay imagine we have 100 sheets here we are on sheet number 1 and we need to know what is the value in 101st sheet or 100th sheet then it will be difficult then it will be very difficult for you to scroll till that 100th sheet and go to that cell and see that 
again you will have to come to, come back to sheet number 1 okay so in that case you can add add something called a watch window okay watch window option is here under the formulas tab only click on the watch window click on the watch window and here you will find a button called add watch under the watch window you will find a button called add watch click on add watch okay and select this cell because this is the cell i wanted to see this this is this is the cell i wanted to see i'll click on add i'll click on add okay now i'll go to the january and i'm going to okay now notice the value here and note also notice that this window is floating this window is floating so whichever sheet i go wherever i go this window will be there this window will be there okay and you can see the value of b10 of consolidated sheet because this is the cell which i have which i have added to the watch window this is the cell which i have added to the watch window what is the value here 49875 okay now i'll change the value to 4000 okay so here you you could see that the value is changed how is it changed because this value is changed this value is actually taken to this particular watch window so you can live we can you can watch live what is happening on another sheet sitting in one sheet to watch what is happening in another sheet we use the watch window okay so watch window is the tool l you watch the value in a cell watch the value in a cell uh cell of another sheet to help you to watch the value in a cell of another sheet clear so that is watch window so watch window watch window will be visible across the sheets any sheets you go the watch window will be still there wherever you go you, your watch window will be still there okay so you can add a cell you can add a cell to the watch window and you can add multiple cells also okay you can add one cell or multiple cells watch window clear so this is watch window if you don't want the watch window you can close this you can close this watch window now another small feature in formula auditing is show formulas here you can see all the values if i am clicking on show formulas what happens is instead of the values the formulas will be shown instead of the values the formulas will be shown that is show formulas clear so these are the things which we need to uh, understand in terms of formula auditing okay just a second let me change the screen and uh, change the file
hold on a moment yes sir i think your screen is not visible right no no i am just sharing it that's all okay i'm okay. opening my file oh. yeah and i i am opening a file any any questions or so one second let me yes, check one question they have asked okay one second i'll i'll read it out so try the flash fill when i am trying to use flash fill for totaling an error popped out we looked at all the data next to your okay if you are doing a formula fine uh, if you are if you are using a formula uh, okay i'll read out the question uh, aloud sir i have try the flash fill when i am trying to use flash fill for totaling an error popped out uh, we looked at all the data next to your selection and didn't see a pattern for filling in values for you help me in this regarding okay if you are using a formula and you are trying to do you are trying to apply flash flash fill then it will not work since the above row the above cell is having a formula in that case this flash fill will not work as per my understanding you have a formula if you have a formula you have another feature to get this down you can drag this down right that is also possible you don't have to use flash fill for that clear hope it's clear flash fill will not work for the cells which is having formulas okay now i'll share the screen again Uh, student has also replied clear, sir. It's clear now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay. Now we are going to learn something called what if analysis. There is a tool in Excel called what if. analysis okay it's purely a data analysis tool it's purely a data analysis tool okay but word of caution here uh, for me for me if you ask me personally i would say what if analysis the, this particular tool of excel is not that great because they they it's it's having so much of limitations okay it's having so much of limitations and it's bit difficult to understand also it is bit okay but if you focus on this you will be able to understand but there are some limitations to this tool limitations on this tool so i would say okay this can be used but this cannot be you know taken as a very important topic okay it's not that important since uh, it's having so much of limitations there are many people who doesn't use it okay so anyways let us learn this concept at least, at least let us understand this concept we cannot say who will be benefited out of this we have two types of what if analysis one is scenario manager one is goal 
seek. Sorry, we have three types. We have data table also. Out of this, scenario manager is still being used. Okay, scenario manager is something which, uh, you know, out of all these three, scenario manager will be used uh, more. Goal seek. Okay, okay. Less people would use it. Data table is very less. So let us, we will not take this. Okay, we will not cover data table because it's difficult to understand and it's not highly useful also. Okay, very less people use data table. So we will not cover data table, but we will try to understand scenario manager and goal seek. These two things we will try to cover. Okay, now what is scenario manager? Imagine we have a situation. For one sit particular situation, we will have one result. For one particular situation, we have a result. When the situation changes to two, obviously the result also should change. Right? So, we are asking Excel to estimate the result by giving different, different, different situations. Okay. I'll repeat. We are trying to ask Excel to give us the results based on different, different situations. Okay, so we will we will give them different situations. Situation three, situation four, like that we will give different different situations. But we are asking Excel what would happen if the situation changes to situation three? What would happen if the same if the situation changes to what uh, situation four? So we can also rephrase this as what if the situation is two? What if the situation is three? What if the situation is four? That is where this term came in. What if analysis? In scenario manager, in scenario manager, situations are called scenario. Okay, different, different scenario. Okay, situations are called scenarios in scenario manager. Now, let us get back to this data. Zoom in. Okay. Imagine this is a data for a bookstore. Okay, the bookstore is having 100 books with them. The bookstore is having 100 books of one single title. Okay, and the bookstore, this bookstore have an option to sell it in higher price or he also have an option to sell it in a lower price. Two options are available. Either he can sell it for a higher price or he can sell it for a lower price. What is the higher price? What is the lower price? We don't have to bother in this case. We do not have to know the exact prices. Higher price and lower price, we do not have to know leave that part okay but one thing which we know is what is the unit price per book if he is selling it for the higher price what is the unit price per book if he is selling for, selling it for the higher price 
and what is the unit price per book if he is selling it for the lower price so if he, if he is selling the book in higher price his profit would be 50 rupees per book if he is selling it for a lower price then his profit per book will be 20 rupees now let us learn some formulas which we have used here okay how have we what is the calculation which we have done here okay now here i will put a percentage and this percentage denotes the percentage sold for higher price okay so out of 100 if 60% of the books are sold in higher price what would happen that is what we have calculated here now this 60 where did i get where did i get the 60 from this 60 is a result of a formula and the formula is b4 into c4 okay where did i get it i got it from a formula using b4 into c4 b4 into c4 now how did i get this 40 from 40 is b4 100 into 1 minus c4 what is c4 this so it's actually the remaining books out of 100 books if 60 books are sold in higher price obviously 40 books will be sold in a lower price right if 70 books is sold in higher price obviously 30 books would have been sold in the lower price is that clear so this is the formula which is used here this is the formula which is used here now how did we arrive at this particular value total profit simple thing this value into this value plus lower price number of books into lower price unit profit so highest price number of books into highest higher price unit profit plus lower price number of books plus into unit price and uh, into lower price unit price unit profit okay this is the formula which i have used to calculate the total profit let us understand this number of books unit price and here also number of books into unit price adding this adding this together i am getting 3800 as the total profit now let me change this value to uh, 40% where which means that 40% of my books 40% of the 100 books is being sold at a higher price 40% of the total 100 books is being sold at the higher price in that case 40 books will be sold in the higher price and remaining 60 books will be sold in the lower price what is the unit profit for higher price it is 50 and for the lower price it is 20 okay so i have multiplied number of books into unit price here it is 2000 rupees and here it is 1200 rupees total is 3200 rupees clear hope the data is clear to you now i am just explaining this data we have not entered into what if analysis at all okay we are yet to enter to what if analysis i am just explaining what is this data all about hope that is clear to you now right now <clears throat> this bookstore want to have different 
uh, want to give different situations. For example, he want to know what if he is selling 60% of his books in higher price. Okay. Another scenario, he want to know what would be his what would be his total profit if he is selling it for 70% higher price. What is his total profit if he is selling it for 20 80% higher price? Then 85% higher price and then 90% higher price and then 90% higher price and then 95% higher price. I want the total profit to be calculated okay to be calculated in each of these scenarios. He is asking me to develop a table he is asking me to develop a table by after doing these calculations. So normally what we can do, we can actually come here. Okay, here I can put it here. Here I can give 60% here. So my total profit is 3000. Total profit is 3800. That 3800 can be written. 3800 can be written here. Now, 70%, I'll change this to 70%. Now, what is the total profit? 4,100, I'll write 4,100 here. Write 4,100 here. One second, guys. Again, some alignment problems. Okay, now 80% higher price. I'll put 80% here. I'll put 80% here. Sorry. 80% here. What is the total? 4400. Now, try do, creating this table manually is taking so much of time, right? Creating this table manually is taking so much of time. But here actually we only have one, two, three, four, five, six scenarios. Even if we have only six scenarios, we are still finding it a bit difficult. So that is where what if analysis scenario manager comes to play, come into picture. Okay. Now let us create this create a same table using what if analysis scenario manager. And let us understand how easy it is when compared to the manual method. Okay, how easy it is when compared to the manual method. For that, you have to go to the data tab. Under the data tab, there is an option called what if analysis. Inside what if analysis, I told you there are three type of what if analysis, scenario manager, gold seek and data table. Data table we are not going to take. Let us start with scenario manager. Okay, when I'm clicking on scenario manager, there is a box which is getting opened. Okay, there is a box which is getting opened. Now I'll click on add because I'm going to add one scenario to this. First thing, he's, it is asking for the scenario name. What is the name which we have to give to this scenario? You can give any name. Okay, you can give any name, 
but here I am just giving uh, 60 HP. Okay, 60% higher price. That is 60 HP. Okay, now second thing, changing cells. So which cell are we going to update? Which cell are we going to give different values? We will be giving different values to this cell called C4. We will be giving different values to this cell called C4. So because when we are changing the value in C4, the number of books here it will be changing and here also it will change and because of that my total also would change. My total also will be changing. So this is the cell which where we are going to give different different values. So that is the cell which we have to select here. So under the changing cells select this cell. Select this cell C4. And click on OK. So in this part we just have to give the name. We just have to give the name of the scenario. And we need to specify which are the which is the changing cells. Then I will click I will click on OK. OK and here I will put 0 0.6. What is this 0 0.6? This cell this field will not accept the percentage symbol. This field will not accept the percentage symbol. So that is why I am giving it as 0 0.6. Both are same, right? Both are same. 0 0.6 and 60% is almost the same. Now I'll click on OK. So my first scenario is ready. OK. But it is taking time because I am explaining this one by one. Otherwise, this is just a second job. Creating one scenario is just a second job. You will take only one second to uh, one or two seconds to complete this process. That's all. OK, now let us add one more scenario. Click on add same process. I will give the name. Uh, 70 HP is the name. 70% higher price. OK, and I will select. From the changing cells field, I will select this cell. And click on OK. Here I will make it to 0.7. That's all. How much time did we take? Not even one minute you took. To uh, complete this. So two scenarios already. I will add one more uh, couple of scenarios more. 80% so higher price. 80 HP by changing cells. There is no change in this changing cells. I will select this cell. I will click on OK. And here I will put 0 0.8. And click on OK. So three scenarios are ready. One more scenario I will create. 90 HP. Changing cell is this cell. And click on OK. Here it, it, you can give 0 0.9. I will click on OK. One more scenario. 95 HP. 95% sold in high price. You can select the cell, cell as this. And click on OK. Here I will put 0 0.9. And click on OK. So I have created five different situations or five different scenarios. OK, now we wanted to see this as the report. We wanted to see this in the form of a report. In that case, you can click on this button called summary. Click on this button called summary. OK, here. I also need to 
tell them which is the final output cell okay which is the final output cell in our case the total profit cell is the final output cell so i'll select this here from this box i'll select this cell from this box i'll select this cell and i'll click on okay now my scenario report is ready so current value currently what is the value it will be shown currently it is 80% that is shown here current value then 60 sp is this is one scenario which we have created so what is the percentage of higher price books it's 60% and the total profit is this if you are selling this for 80 if you are selling 80% of your books for higher price you will be getting the profit as this if you are selling 90% of the books in higher price you will get 4700 as the total as the uh, total profit okay here i did not change i am sorry uh, here you should have actually given 95% 0.95 you should have given i did not give that that is why it's showing still 90% and the value is also same okay this is the scenario report scenario summary report you can add any number of scenarios here and get the report using that okay so this is scenario manager and hope this is clear to you i'll open up for the q and a session after finishing of the next go, uh, next what if analysis also we need to cover one more what if analysis which is called gold seek okay for that i am going to take another file i don't think it's open let me open that file Please hold on for a moment. I am opening up the sheet. Okay. Let me share the screen now. Uh, Kunal, can you confirm if the Excel screen is visible? Yes, 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 sir. Your screen is visible, sir. Okay. okay see. Yeah.
imagine this is a data of a uh, baking company or or it's a, it's a cake making company okay so their previous year data is given here maybe this is the last year data last year sales data for each month what is the sale value for the cakes that is a question here okay for each month what is the total sale for the cakes so that is the report which is given here and this report is pertaining to uh, last year now i am going to i am actually trying to create a budget for the next year i am trying to create a budget for the next year so i am putting all the values as such okay and my target my target for the next year the total target is uh, let us say it is 3 lakh 75000 last year it was 3 lakh 47000 this year we are aiming at a value called value of 3 lakh 75000 now if all of you know that the best business for a cake shop will be happening in december month clear the best sale for a cake shop will happen in december month so now i am trying to understand i am trying to understand if we are doing the same value of sale that of last year for january till november okay if we are doing the same sales if we are doing the same sales from january till november and in december i am going to boost my sale december i am going to boost my sale so what should be my december sale value what should be my december sale value if we need to reach the target of 375000 hope it's clear january to november there is no change whatever we have done last year the same values will be achieved this year also there is no change but december i am going to plan accordingly and what is the december sales value to be achieved so that we target we reach the target of 3 lakh 75000 that is where the importance of what if analysis gold seek come into picture okay now i'll go to the data tab under the what if analysis i select gold seek gold seek is much easier when compared to scenario manager only three things to be provided only three things what is the first one set cell here you must select the select this particular cell you must select a, okay before that let me let me have a formula this is 2020 sales and 2021 target okay the first one is 2020 sales second row is that of 2021 targets my total target as i told you is 375000 but currently it is only showing 3 lakh 20000 because we have not filled in any data for december that is the reason now let us go back to this let us click on gold seek i must choose a cell here which cell do you have to choose the final value cell in this case this is my final value cell i'll select this cell to value how much should i change what is the new value for this particular cell okay what am i trying to achieve here 
I am trying to achieve 3,75,000 here. So O3 cell, this is O3. O3 cell have to be updated to 3,75,000. How do, how do you have to change it? By changing the cell. Which cell have to be changed? This cell. So by changing the December sales cell, my O3 cell has to reach 3,75,000. In that case, what should be my December uh, month sale? What should be my December month sale? Let us click on OK. Now it is showing 54,961 is the value if you have to reach the total target of 3,75,000. You must achieve 54,961 rupees value in the month of December so that you reach 3,75,000 target. This is gold seek. Now, here you have two options. Either, either you can click on OK or you can click on Cancel. If you cancel this, the value will go back to its previous value. OK, the value will change. It will go back to the previous one. Fine. Now, now I can select this. I, I, can, I can do this maybe by considering the September month. Okay, let us now try to change the September month sale so that we reach 3,75,000. So that we reach 3,75,000. In that case, again, I'll go here, what if analysis, gold seek. Set to sell is this sell. To value is 3,75,000. By changing cell is September month sale. Then I'll click on OK. 3,75,000. So if I'm clicking on OK, this value will be fixed. This value will be fixed. If I cancel it, the value will go back, go back to its previous position. This is gold seek. But the limitation here is that you can only change one variable here. You can change any one month value and check it. You cannot tell that, okay, uh, how much should we change across 12 months to reach 3,75,000? We cannot ask you a question like that because only one variable can be provided at a point, at a time. Only one variable at a time. Right? This is gold seek. Now I will open this for the q and a. All these technicalities in a proper manner, you have to make a, you have to keep a good record book kind of a thing. Okay, for the, for maybe, uh, for uh, the first few months you will have to refer to that books. Then once you start using this, then you don't have to refer the books at all. Gold seek is what we have explained right now. I will explain this again. Gold seek is where we are changing one particular variable and trying to understand, trying to understand what change should be there in that particular variable to reach a certain target? Okay, in this case, for example, let me take this back to this. In this case, for example, this is my 2020 sales, actual sales data, and 2021 targets, next year targets. Okay, now uh, my total target is 3,75,000 rupees. That is my total target. Now I want to know what should be my December sales to achieve total target of 3,75,000. Considering all the other months we are doing the exact same sale that of last year. Considering we are 
doing the same sale, exact same sales for all the other months from January till November. Okay, so we are only trying to change the, this particular cell, that of December. For that, I'll go to the what if analysis, I'll click on gold seek. Okay, set cell, you need to set this cell, final value cell you have to select. To value, what is the target? You have to put the target, 3,75,000 rupees, that this is my target. By changing cell, which variable cell you are trying to select, you have to select that. Here in this case, my variable cell is December cell. My variable cell is December cell. Okay, I'm clicking on okay. Now it will tell me how much sale should I do to achieve, how much sale should I do in December to achieve my target of 3,75,000. it's clear now if you directly put cell name instead of uh, it might give you an error it might not work properly if you are not using dollar sign it might not work properly and that you can try it also as I told you earlier also don't ask me anything which you can also try try it out then you will not forget. I will not spoon feed you. Guys, please put a clear message if it's clear and please check your doubts. You can put, uh, please put your doubts in the Q&A session if you have any doubts. Can we use the gold seek to increase every month's sales proportionally? Huh, that is what I'm trying to tell. I've already told there is there is no option to change every month's sale proportionally in gold seek. That is the limitation of gold seek. No options. Okay, I think uh, there is no no more questions. We will continue with the sessions. Can you please explain scenery manager again? I'll I'll explain this once more. Okay, I'll explain this once more. Please attend uh, and listen to this focus. Hope you are clear with this data. Here I have a total of 100 books. I am trying to I am trying to find out uh, different scenarios. Okay, I am trying to find out the total profit for different scenarios. What is, what are those different scenarios? What if I am selling 70 percent, 60 percent of my books in higher price? What if I am selling 70% of my books in higher price? And what is the total profit if I am selling 80% of my books in higher price? And 90% higher price and 95% higher price. Okay, these are the scenarios which we are trying to find out. Okay, so how much is the total sales, total profit for each scenario? 
how much should would be the total profit for each scenario that is what i am trying to get it here now uh go to the data tab what if analysis and click on scenario manager already there are some scenarios here i'll delete this one by one i don't want this anymore okay the first time when you are taking the scenario manager it will be like this click on add button and uh, give a na name for the scenario here i am just giving 60 hp as the uh, name 60 hp as the name now by changing the cells means you need to say you need to select this cell because this is the cell where i am going to put the percentages this is the cell where i am going to put different 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 percentages so that my total profit will be calculated clear so when when i am changing this cell my this cell will be changing this cell will be changing when i am changing these two cells my total profit also will change accordingly so this is my source cell okay so i'll select this cell for changing cells and i'll click on okay all right i'll i'll select this and click on okay now what is the value which is to be given to this cell 60% instead of 60% you can put 0.6 here instead of 60% you can put 0.6 here i'll click on okay now one scenario has been added i'll add multiple scenarios like this next scenario is 70 hp okay i'll select this cell only for the changing cells okay and 0.7 is the value which i am going to give it here then again add 80% higher price i'll click on okay here 0.8 is what i am trying to give again add one more scenario 95 hp 95% is the higher price i'll click on okay and 0 0.95 is what need to give here and click on okay now once all the scenarios has been created you can click on this summary okay now it will ask you for the final cell which is the final cell okay in this case in our case total profit is the final cell so I'll, you need to select this cell then click on okay so it will open up a new sheet it will create one new sheet where you will find all the different scenario values here what is the total profit for each scenario is given is detailed here right so hope it's clear now I'm opening up a new sheet. Please give me a moment. The student is writing clear, sir. Okay.
Now, another area where many people find it very difficult is when they try to print out, when they try to take the print out of the Excel workbooks. Okay. But Excel actually gives you so many features when it comes to the printing. But many people doesn't know that, doesn't even know that there are so many such good features in Excel for printing. Okay, so we will be taken, we'll be taking through one by one about all the printing features in Excel, all the features related to printing in Excel. In Excel. Okay. First thing we are going to the page layout. Okay, the first thing which we are going going is to the page layout. There are some options in page layout which we will see here. The first thing out in the in the page layout, we can set margins. Okay, we can set the margins. We can have normal margin or a wide margin or a normal margin as we had discussed in discussed when we were take, uh, talking about the word. Okay, MS Word, we had discussed all these margins, different margins, right? There are, there is a uh, normal margin is there, wide margin is there, narrow margin is there, and you can even go to the custom margins also. You can also go to the custom margins. In custom margins, you can specify what is the margin for top, what is the margin for left, what is the margin for right, and what is the margin for bottom. All these margins you can specify manually also. That is also possible. Clear? So that is about the margins. You can also set the orientation. You can make it to portrait or the landscape. Both are both options are available. From this, you can choose the type of the page, the size of the page which you are going to use for printing. Okay, whether it is A4 page or a legal size or an A5 page, whatever it is, you can choose the size from here. Okay, now all these three things you know it, even from MS Word also you know it. Now there is something called a print area. Imagine I don't want the entire sheet to be printed. I don't want the entire sheet to be printed. I want only these many rows to be printed. Okay, so I'll select these rows and go to this print area and click on set to print area. Now let us see what happens when we are going to the print preview. What is there in print preview? In the print preview section, you will find that only nine cells or 10 cells which was selected is only getting printed. No other rows are included in the print. Why? Because we had set a print area. Now, if you don't want this print area selection, you can go here and click on clear print area. Now again, let me go to the print preview. Now you will find that all the rows are getting printed again. We have cleared that print area selection. So both options are available under the print area. You can either set the print area by selecting some cells or, or you can clear the print area whenever it is needed. Okay, next one. Uh, okay, breaks, we will take it separately. There is another option to uh, fix the page breaks and all. There we will take it. Background, you can have a background image. If you want to have a background image, you can choose it. 
it is just like word i don't have to explain that much so the background image will be there on the paper when you are uh, taking the print okay now second when another very important tool there is something called a print title now i am going to the print preview section if you can closely observe we have all the headings here order date state city category product quantity unit price total value all the headings are there in my page number 1 now i am moving to my page number 2 but page number 2 i do not have that heading page number 3 i do not have that heading so if we don't have the heading the problem is that it is it will be difficult for you to identify which column is this you have some numbers so is it is, is it a quantity column or a unit price column it's confusing it will be difficult for you to understand the column if you don't have the heading clear so now what we are trying to do is we are trying to add this heading for all the rows for, for all the pages manually adding this heading for all the pages out of question hectic task but there is a tool here called print titles which will help you to get this heading repeated this heading repeated on all the pages which we print how do we do it go to the print titles it will open up a particular window in that window you have something called rows to repeat at top you have an option called rows to repeat at top click inside the box of rows to repeat at top and select this row select this row just click on the row number that's all okay automatically the row address will be populated here row address will be populated here and like now i'll click on okay You click on OK, and now let us see the print preview. Page number one, we still have the headings here. Page number two, we have got the headings added to the page number two also. Page number three, again the same heading has been repeated. Four heading is there. Five. heading is there and even sixth page page also the heading is there even if you have 50 100 pages all the pages will get this heading that is called print titles i'll show that feature again i'll show that feature again uh, go to the print titles under the rows to repeat at top section click on that box after clicking on this box i mean the cursor should come inside okay the cursor should come inside see observe this cursor blinking inside once the cursor is there inside come out and select the first row click on row number 1 and click on okay and click on okay now i'll go to the control p print preview now i'll be able to see that for all the pages for each pages the heading is been added this row is getting repeated across all the pages that is the beauty of print titles
right now there is something called scale there is something called a scale okay scale if you are if you are changing the scale to 50% without changing the font okay without changing the font my content in the print will be too small now because i am taking only 50% of the actual size of the contents i am taking only 50% of the actual size of the content and we can increase the width also increase the size, scale also now it is 50% i can make it to 150% also now i am taking 150% of my actual content size without touching on the font size i i did not do anything on my font size i did not change the font size okay but when we are putting 150 percentage the sizes will automatically gets updated is that clear so that's the scale option sorry that's the scale option scaling options now next thing which we need to understand here is okay here also there is something uh, grid lines there is something called grid lines okay under the grid lines you have two tabs two boxes we have a view box and a print box if you disable this view disable this from the view box okay i'll take another sheet when we are disable this from disabling from it from the view box you will not be able to see any grid lines here see there is no grid lines but there are cells cross column cells everything is there but the grid lines is not there okay and though we have some grid lines here this grid lines will not come in the print see if i am trying, trying to take the print out of this there won't be any grid lines so you want the grid lines to be there you want this grid lines to be there in the print also then you will have to enable this option in that case i will go to the control i mean print preview i'll find that these grid lines are visible now in the print also so two options either you can enable or disable the view of grid lines or you can even enable or disable the print of the grid lines now what is headings headings is we have enabled the view for the headings that is why i am able to see the column id and the raw numbers if we are disabling that you won't be able to see the column id and the raw numbers you can see the rows and columns but you cannot see the raw id and the column headings now i am in, i am enabling that to the print as well i am enabling the am enabling the headings to the print as well now i'll go to the print preview i'll find that all the raw raw id and the column headings are visible in the print also raw id and the column headings are visible in the print section also that is grid lines and the headings now let us go to the view tab under the view tab we have something called page break preview click on the page break preview okay here this is where you will be able to understand where all have we have the page breaks where, which are all the areas where we have the page breaks all these blue lines no all these blue lines are considered to be a page break 
this blue lines this blue horizontal or vertical all these are considered to be page breaks so we will understand now that only till quantity only till quantity it is getting printed i mean it is getting it in the one page unit price and the total value is not a part of this page i think that is because we have changed the scaling to 150 percentage i will change this back to 100 percentage now you will see that now you will see that these two columns also have been included in this print okay now you don't want these two columns to be printed then you can decrease it then you can just drag it now whatever we see in the gray gray shade when we are going to the page break preview whatever we see in the gray shade is not as a not a part of the print this will not come in the print, printed pages okay whatever we see in the gray shade will not come in the print whatever we see in the white color white background only those cells will get printed now i'll again increase it so that these are also included so this is another benefit of using the uh, print uh, page break preview now here i don't want the page break here i want the page break maybe 50th line 50th row after the 50th row i want the page break so i'll click it and drag it down to 50 now my page page is getting break after the 50th row so you can specify where you want the page break to be there you can specify the page breaks you can select the page breaks give me a moment please so this is how we change the page breaks now we can also add headers and footers we can also add headers and footers to each page just like we had we did it for the uh, word ms word also we have added headers and footers in excel also we have an option to add headers and footers we can add the page number we can add the document title okay all those things we can add how do we add the headers and footers uh, let me go to insert tab under the insert tab there is a text option which is available under the insert tab you have a text option under the text option you will have the header and footer click on header and footer one second okay click on header and footer you will find the what is happening okay you will find the sections to add headers and footers you will find the sections to add headers and footers 
in your excel worksheets okay in excel we have three spaces to add the header we have the left pane we have the center pane and we have the right pane to add a header now in the left pane i wanted to add the page number okay so i'll go to the header and footer here when i'm selecting the header and footer i'll get this tab called header and footer under the header and footer click on the okay uh, under the header under the header itself you have different options to add the page name page number okay here uh, page 1 here it is page 1 of question mark what is this one of question mark let us try let us see what is this one of question mark okay here one of six means we have total of six pages and this is the first page out of it that is one of question mark okay when you set this automatically when you are uh, coming down let us see let us see the second page second page we have the page 2 of 6 it is automatically getting updated 3 of 6 4 of 6 6 like that it will go up to 6 of 6 pages so this is how we add page number again in page number also we have different options we have different options in adding page numbers one is just we can add only one page number only otherwise we can go for this option called page 1 of question mark which will show the total number of pages and which page you are in now okay and food sales food sales what is food sales food sales is the sheet name if you want to include the sheet name also you can choose this okay you can choose this okay and so many things you can add to the header section so many things we can you can add to the header section and similarly we can add details to, we can add something to the footer also okay footer i can choose i can tell it's confidential okay so what would happen when we are adding some adding a content to the footer all the pages sorry, all the pages have will get this footer enabled page number 1 it is the page number 2 it is the we have the heading and the footer which is repeated in all the pages of this document that is the benefit of header and footer now when we are clicking on the control p here also there are some options which we need to know here the option is print active sheets or print entire workbook there are two options either we can print only one active sheet or you can go for printing the entire workbook whichever whatever sheets even if you have 10 sheets it will get printed that is print entire workbook then uh, collated and all it's printer dependent okay it's printer dependent again the margins which we have discussed now we, the margins from here also you can change the margin margin okay now there is something called a custom scaling okay scaling options are there here we can choose fit sheet on one page if i am clicking this the whole content the whole content will be shrinked to fit it on a single page obviously the font size everything will be very small otherwise you cannot include this many content in it in one single page to get these contents inside a page excel will decrease the font size drastically okay fit fit all columns on one page in that case in that scaling option whatever columns are there will be 
uh, included in one page. Okay, columns will not be taken to next page. Next option. Next option is fit all rows on one page. In our case, doing fit, uh, uh, selecting this fit sheet on one page and fit all rows on one page are both are same. Both are same in our case. Okay, when we are clicking on fit all rows, the same thing would happen. Okay, so these are the scaling options, predefined scaling options which is available. Right, so these are the printing features in Excel. As I told you, more, many people doesn't know that these many features are available in terms of printing. I tried the print but did not show any raw or columns in print preview. I think that is one. Uh, we, we have already discussed that. Uh, you can add the, uh, you can enable the printing grid lines. In print review, the margin of row and column is not showing. Margin of row and column. What is the margin of row and column? I didn't get that. Sorry. In my laptop, scale option is not enabling what to do. Uh, which option, which version are you using? Can you uh, tell me which version are you using for Excel? Then can we use background image in print or add what once? Yes, that is what I had shown. We have we have an option called background. So we can uh, add watermarks. We can add background images. Everything is possible. If it's clear, you can put a clear message, guys. Or if you have any doubts, you can mention the doubts also. Please show the option of watermark and background. Uh, background I had already shown, no? I had already shown. I'll, I'll just show it again. It is there inside. Inside the page layout, you have the background. Inside the page layout, we have the background. And uh, Inside this insert option. OK, you can uh, I, I, I think like word like MS word, we don't have an option to add a watermark, but then what we can do is we can add a word arc. OK, we can add a word arc and I think we can uh, decrease the uh, transparency level. OK, so I'll just put confidential something. OK. And I'll select this and uh, you can go here. What is that? There is an option to uh, change the transparency level so that this will look blurred. 
that you can try. Uh, I mean, uh, I have not tried it. You can try that. And if you wanted to add an image, there is an option here itself. In the page layout, we have the background here. From here, you can choose the image. You can either go for an online uh, image searching or you can use a image, use an image from your system. It's working. Thank you. Okay, so let us move on to the next topic. Just give me a moment. Stopping multiple sheets. This be online, guys. So now, uh, let it be. Now we are going to learn the most important, one of the most important concepts in advanced Excel, which is called lookup functions. Okay, somebody was telling in the morning, uh, you're eager to know about the lookup functions. So that is where we are in. We can add from insert a tab, sir. We can add from insert tab, sir. Uh, I don't, I don't understand this con uh, context. What were you talking about? 
adding from the insert tab, uh, tab heading it now i want you to completely fully focus here okay if you are new to lookup functions then definitely you will have to have the complete concentration here Now, what is a lookup function? What is a lookup function? Lookup function uh, helps to retrieve a corresponding data from another column okay i'll put it like this it helps to search for a value lookup function helps to search for a value and retrieve the value from another corresponding column helps to search for a value and retrieve the value from another corresponding column that is where we use the lookup functions now we need to understand some important terminologies uh, when we are learning about the lookup function one important term here is lookup value one important term here is lookup value this is the value which we are searching for okay as i told you helps to search for a value so whatever value we are trying to search is the lookup value whatever value we are trying to search is called a lookup value second thing retrieve value retrieve value is this is the value which we need to retrieve from the corresponding column or row here also it's corresponding column or row at of the lookup value let us take this example let us take the same example do we have an order id i don't have an order let me add an order id column here order id okay order id uh, let me give 1001 and let me drag this sorry 1001 and 1002 i'll select this and get this field okay this is my uh, order id right okay so for example we are going to give an order id here for example i am giving 1004 as the order id here i want to get the category category of this particular order this order is for which category 
I also want to know the quantity of this order, quantity value of this order. Then I wanted to know the total price of this order. So we are asking Excel to go to this table and search for this value. OK, and retrieve the and retrieve the category. Which is corresponding to this particular order ID. Which is corresponding to the order ID 1004. Get me the category which is corresponding to order ID 1004. Get me the quantity which is corresponding to this order ID. And get me the total value also from corresponding to this order ID. So which is the lookup value here? Which is the lookup value here? This is my lookup value. OK, and. All the other, all these three cells. All these. Three cells. Is my retrieve. Value. One second. All these three cells are the retrieve value for me. This is lookup value and these are retrieve value. Hope it's hope these two terminologies are clear. Hope these two terminologies are clear. OK, now. Second thing which we need to understand here. We have. Three lookup functions. Three type of lookup functions are available. One is V lookup. Next one is H lookup. And third one is X lookup. V lookup, H lookup and X lookup. These are the three different type of lookup functions available in Excel. When do we use V lookup? When do we use H lookup? When do we use X lookup? We will learn it one by one. VLOOKUP is used when we need to get when we need to retrieve the value from the right side of the lookup value. In this case, in this case, when we are giving 1004 as the lookup value and you need to get the category. OK, we are giving 1004 as the lookup value and the category as the retrieve value. So the Excel have to look towards right. Right, so Excel have to look towards right. In this case, even even if it is quantity also Excel have to look towards right. Total value also Excel have to look towards right right of this lookup value. Right means right of this lookup value. OK, in all these cases we will use V lookup only. So whenever we need to retrieve the value from the right side of the lookup value, then we have to use V lookup function. How what is the what is the syntax for V lookup function? Syntax for V lookup function is is equal to V lookup. OK, the first attribute is lookup value. Now we know what is the lookup value. This is my lookup value. Comma. Now I will select the whole table. OK, second attribute, I will select the whole table from. Beginning till end complete table has been selected. Comma. 
Now, third parameter is there is something called column index number. This is something which we need to understand. In my selection, okay, when I selected this table, what is the column index number of the category column? In my selection, what is the column index number of my category column? So where is my selection? These are my selections. All these columns are my selection. I have selected all these columns here in my second parameter. Okay, so in that selection, my column one is this. This is my column number one. This is my column number two. This is column number three. This is column number four. And this is column number five. So my retrieval data, my retrieve value is in fifth column. So I'll put five here. Where is my retrieve column? Retrieve value. My retrieve value is in the fifth column. So I'll put five here. And last parameter for the time being, just use false. What is false? Why are we giving false? Why are we not giving true? All these things we will look up later.
so what we okay, 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 okay. now it's almost 3 so yes, we yes, end yes, the session yes. now and we then can we continue can continue at 3:30 yes yes sure sure ma'am sure ma'am okay uh, just announce to the students kunal yeah uh, dear students right now some due to some technical problem with the faculty we are ending this session again we will carry the same session again at 3:30 sharp so stay tuned we will be back again at 3:30 and join the session Okay student thank you